thank you all for coming. I'm JC Baller, and this is no, Walker Call. No, no, no. Call. I'm JC Baller, and you're Walker Call. We keep getting this box. Ah. All right. Okay, so we chose Seascape with Sharks and Dancer because of its fun, witty banter and raw human nature and connection between these two beautiful characters. Uh, I, we just want to warn you that um, there is like smoking and references to like sexual violence in that show. So if those things bother you, please use the exit to your right. Without further ado, we hope you enjoy the show as well as hopefully the other five stops, which are fantastic. You should go see them. So without further ado, Seascape with Sharks and Dancer by Don Negro. Sorry. And don't be sorry. All right. 
don't always agree with you. You're sort of hard to please. I don't contradict you. I didn't contradict you. See? <laughs> you seem to be sort of a unit. Now wait a minute. It's all right. I don't guess you can help it. What are you trying to prove anyway? I'm not trying to prove anything. I've known you for about 45 minutes and already you're calling me a chicken and a eunuch. Sounds to me like you're trying to prove Like something. what? I don't know. If you're trying to prove you're cute, you're not succeeding. Well, you're not dead. just you, oh gee. I mean, didn't I just drag you out of the ocean when you were drunk? I was dancing! Giving you hot chocolate and marshmallows. Marshmallows? And isn't this my house and isn't that my blanket? And didn't I just... Why are you getting so mad? Who's mad? I'm not mad! Hey, I'm on top of the world! <laughs> Proves my point. Insecurity. And besides, if you're not a eunuch, then how come you didn't rape me? You had me all naked and wet and helpless and everything. All you did was give me hot chocolate. You didn't rape me because you're a unit. So there. <laughs> I didn't rape you because you're homely. <gasps> I am not homely. You're homely and stupid and a chicken and rude and ungrateful. I'm ungrateful. You stink. Just where do you think you get off talking to me like that anyway? <laughs> I'm not homely. I never was homely. I'm never going to be homely. I'm hey, beautiful hey, and hey, people hey, love hey, me hey, and you're just hey, jealous hey, because hey, you're ugly hey, and hey, no hey, one hey, loves you. Hey. Give me go, you pig! Ah, I'm getting out of here! Get your slimy hands off me, you pervert! Adventures. All right, all right. 
if I'm going to tell you the story, you got to shut up and keep your nose stiff. Okay. Well, once upon a time, there was a little girl. She wandered all over the country. She rides and shacking up until she just been about everything and gotten almost everywhere. Although, she was in fact only 20 and a half years old. She fast forward. You can't say. Shut up. <laughs> so finally, this little girl found herself plunk in the middle of New York City, all shacked up nicely with a handsome prince. And she had a job at this sick department store selling orthopedic brassiers. And one day, a little squid like manager said she was fired for setting a bad example. By now wearing this incredible bra thing she was supposed to be selling to these saggy baggy old ladies. So she went to her nice little cave feeling sad. She opened the door and the cave was absolutely empty. The handsome prince had taken everything except the cockroaches and skipped away to Miami. She really didn't care much because the prince had a pronounced inability to hear chickens and several other faults which I forget. So she took her last subway token out of her pocket and went to Coney Island. Snuck into the aquarium and saw the fishes again. But wasn't really paying any special attention until she got to the shark tank. She began to be really fascinated by these stupid sharks. They swim by and look at her with eyes blaring. The girl just stood there, looking at the sharks that were stupid, but waiting for her. been abducted like this. But you haven't been I abducted. have to. Not inducted or deducted. I have been abducted. Are you done bleeding or what? Sure. Yeah. Can I take this thing out of my nose? No, no, no. Wait a minute. When I pull it out, you're going to take a nice deep breath through your nose and an enormous clot of blood is going to drop down on your throat. It'll be like you're swallowing up a mashed up dough. <laughs> Great imagination you got there. Kid. I'm very imaginative. Don't you have anything around here to eat? Do all you abductors starve your abductees? Yeah. Why don't you go into the kitchen and make me a hand sandwich? Sure, why not? You want Swiss or cream cheese? Both, but don't put the cheeses together. Put the cream cheese on one side of the ham and the Swiss cheese on the other. Yes, ma'am. Hurry up. I, why don't you come in here and help me? I'm the guest. Don't you want to hear the rest of my story? Sure, go ahead. Why should I? I don't know. It was a thrilling story. So after she got done looking at the sharks, she went out onto the beach at Coney Island. Only nobody was there. Just her and the sand and some seagulls. So she got on the Greyhound to Pittsburgh, where a woman in a funny hat stole her ticket some old Greek guy in the coffee shop was driving to Woodstock in Rhode Island. So she thought, what the hell? And from there, she got a ride up to Provincetown with some acid freaks and a purple Volkswagen. On the way, she got out to look at the sharks. She started to smell sharks. The end. Now you tell me a story. I, I don't know any stories. Don't eat that so fast, you'll choke to death. Hmm? Set! You said if I showed you how you would, and anybody who promises and chickens out is no good no, no, during- no. Once upon a time, uh, once upon a time, there was a bewildered young man. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so, uh, this young man was walking along the beach one night. Around here? Close. How come? I don't know why not. It, he was despondent. His goldfish died. How should I know? She's asking. So, and he spots this wounded bird floating in the ocean. What kind of dumb story is that? Will you shut up? Okay, go on with your stupid story. <laughs> what kind of bird was it? A loo. A wounded, featherless loo. How did it get wounded? Sharks. That is the stupidest story I've ever heard about. Good, I'll life. stop. No, go ahead. What the hell? So he 
pulls this bird out of the ocean, see, and the loon began to shriek at him. What did it do that for? Possibly, in its own peculiar native loony bird language. It was asking for help. That is the most revolting story I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> you, you what me? kind of stupid shrieking bird goes around shrieking its head off for help for some perfect stranger? You asked me for a story, that's the best I can do. Well, it's awful. Hey, what do you do besides sitting around making hot chocolate and bleeding? I'm a writer. I'm writing a novel. <laughs> You're a writer? <laughs> but you're not actually living off that, right? No. I work at a library. Ah, that sounds more like it. How's your nose? It's all right. I bet a lot of writers start out working in libraries.
did so too. I do not have nightmares. Yeah. You had one last night. You were yelling and crying and all twisted up. I don't remember that. And then you, and then I got a hold of you and untwisted you some. And that then I... part I remember. Boy, what a slob. How can you stand to live amidst all this filth? <laughs> it's not filth, it's the mess you made last night. What was your nightmare about? I don't know. What does anybody dream about? What do you dream about? Old houses, mostly. It's pretty weird. I know. I just find myself walking through these old houses, down stairways, through passages. That's all that happens? Pretty much. What would you do if you were having this dream, and you're in this old dark house, or something, and you're going down this hallway, and you turn the corner, and all of a sudden, there's a real, live, actual flesh and blood human person right there. I grab her. <laughs> what if she was repulsive or obnoxious? Obnoxious, yes. I mean, I have a holding.
tiny little things are all over the place and they whisper things like music in my ear that I can't quite make out and they make these horrible and betrayed and shocked voices. And then what? And then I wake up and find myself having sex with some character I don't even know who's going to get in a hell of a lot of trouble if he doesn't let me get out of here quick. What do you want for lunch? My name is Tracy. Very nice name. It's a stupid name. If I'm gonna live here, there's gotta be some rules. Like, don't ever expect anything from me. You won't get disappointed that way. Any other rules I should know about? Telling me what to do. I'm telling you what to do. <laughs> no making fun of me. Can I write these down? <laughs> no television. No television. No smoking. No smoking. No spitting, no barking, no left hand. Hey, cut that out. I'm going in and getting dressed. You don't have any clothes. Oh, I forgot. You can borrow some of mine. I don't like yours. Well, just for today, and then I'll just tell me what size and uh, what you like, and I'll drive into town this afternoon and get you some. I don't want anybody buying me things. Well, is it against the rules? Okay, but only because it's an emergency. If I start wearing your clothes for too long, I'll start to smell like you. Yes, we'll try to keep that in mind. Makes you nervous. Can't sleep. You want me to quit, don't you? 
break my heart. How would I pay my fees then? What's wrong with the one I've got? It's a seedy little dump, and the proprietor is a leech, and it's crawling with drug ridden maniacs who can't keep their fingers off of you. So come down and beat them up. I'm supposed to beat them all you up? You wouldn't even beat one of them up. I'm a writer! Give me a book. I need my fingers to play the violin. If you ever finish the novel in the refrigerator... Would you please tell me what's wrong with you? I say please. You say please too much. Sorry. You say sorry even more too much. What would you like me to say, though? Why do you want me to tell you what I want you to say for? Why don't you just say whatever you feel, and if I don't like it, I'll tell you so. I'm sure you will. I don't like that. I didn't think you would. This is 
necessarily a bad thing. Yes, it is. It's, it's all right. All right? How the hell did you know I was pregnant? Every morning between 8.03 and 8.07, <laughs> you excuse yourself politely from the breakfast table, go into the bathroom, throw off your oatmeal. How long? How long what? How long have you been pregnant? I don't know. You tell me, Sherlock. What difference does it make? <laughs> It'd be nice to know when you're going to have it. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? Tell me before. Before what? Before you just told me. I just did. <laughs> well, then why didn't you tell me before? Before what? There's, there's no reason to get upset about it. Damage is already done. Damage. That's a nice I, way to I didn't mean it like that. What other way is there? There's this thing growing inside of me like a fungus, and there goes our lives. At least my life. I guess it doesn't do much to yours. It does as much to me as it does to you. Really? You're going to get up every morning and throw up with me. <laughs> Why don't we just sit down and relax? I am sitting down. Oh, relax! I'm relaxing! Is it going to make me any less pregnant? You like children! I hate children! But he hates <laughs> children! My father hates children! No, he does not! He hates me! That's different! How is that different? Well, I notice you seem to be pretty jealous of other people's children. Your understanding of character is literary, not visceral. What's that supposed to mean? Visceral? It means I know what visceral means. You treat people like they were characters in books. You have no sense of cause and effect, no sense of reality. I, I don't understand what that has got to do with you being pregnant. Of course you don't. You don't understand anything about anything. Do you know why? No, tell me why. I'll tell you why. I thought you would. You can't connect things up in your mind. When I tell you I'm going to meet you someplace, and then you come home and find me sitting here eating a popsicle, what do you do? Do you yell at me? Do you beat me up? Do you throw me out? No. You come over and lick my popsicle. <laughs> like you expected me not to come, and then you act like you're not even mad. What well, flavor popsicle? You so I accept you so much. <laughs> but you don't accept me. You don't even see me. You just see some nice little drippy-eyed girl who just can't help herself because of her unfortunate childhood toilet training experiences, when in reality, I'm a normal, healthy person who, yes, screams a lot, and knows exactly what she's doing. You can't be anybody's father. You can't just accept your children. You have to teach them how to handle themselves and how rotten the world is. We can't have a baby. We're going to have one, so we might as well make the best of That's it. That's another thing wrong with you. You're always trying to make the best of things. Do you realize what a pain that is? There are many things you just can't make the best out of. And I'm one of them. I'm not domesticable. I never was domesticable, and I'm never going to be domesticable. Boy, I should have gone out of here so quick when I could have. Babies are the worst trap there is. They make you old. Be old. Let's just go to bed and we can talk about this tomorrow. <laughs> That's it. Stuff it under the sheets. A little early morning tussle and a nap will make it all right. That's what got us in the damn thing should be place. all right. I mean, I can take the novel out of the refrigerator Great. and send it to New York and start working nights, maybe. And maybe we can get some money out of your father by asking your mother to get it from him. So he'll give it to her and make her promise not to tell us My where she got it from. My father's a lunatic! And I can sell the car and we can pay one of your stupid sisters to take care of the kid while you're at school. Hell, we can even get married! Who asked you?! So we'll have to change a few diapers and uh, we'll have to start staying up at night and buy a lot of things for it and feed it in the middle of the night and I won't be able to write as much and you won't be able to study, study as much and we'll be a lot poorer and we'll be a lot less free and our lives will be a little bit more ordinary and we will be
be a little bit more like everybody else. So what? What about it? Our lives are ruined, and all you want to do is go to bed. Why don't you hit me or something? Just once, I wish you'd wind up and punch me right in the mouth. You're so insensitive. Fine. If you want to argue all night, that's great. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm cold. I'll be in in just a minute. I'm cold now. If it sees fair or not, 
Or if it sounds right. You do that, and you can forget all about me. I won't sleep with you. I won't live in the same house as you. I won't be able to look at you. What are you getting so upset about? I don't know, but I mean it. Well, you go right ahead. I'm pretty sick of you anyway. You sound like the Pope or something. If I were the Pope, you wouldn't be pregnant. Don't bet on it. <laughs> Why are we talking about the Pope? Do I care about the Pope? Who gives a damn about the Pope anyway? Don't you dare insult the Pope. <laughs> I don't care what your father thinks, or whether it's legal, or how nice the doctor is, or if other people think it's wrong or right. It's, this is not happening to other people. It's happening to us. And if you do that, Kill the little thing living inside of you. I'm afraid you'll be killing us too. I don't want that to happen. If you can treat me like this, when I'm the one that has to be fat and sick and go through all the pain, then maybe we're already dead. Maybe we always were. I have to go. You better not try and stop me. I don't think I'm going to try and stop you. You mean it's all right? I didn't say it was all right. I just said I didn't think I was going to try and stop you. Okay, good. Because I'm going. So, goodbye. to make me hate you. That's a lie. It isn't. You've always done it. That's a lie. No, it's not. Why do you take it? I asked you first. When you were little, did your parents keep giving you these animals? Listen, if you don't want to hear this, I can just leave. So, my parents kept giving me these animals, see? And not just like cats and dogs, a pregnant raccoon and a deflowered skunk and all kinds of things like that. And, and the house we lived in was too close to the road. And what happens when you live too close is that all your animals get splattered. And your brothers are having to go out with a shovel and take them off and take them someplace to bury. And sometimes if they're squashed, but not quite dead, brother has to hit them with the shovel until they stop screaming or quacking or squawking or whining or meowing. And, and giving them names makes it worse. But I love to and I couldn't help it and I did. And when they 
got squashed. It wasn't just the cat or the duck. It was someone with a name who you lived with and slept with and talked at and listened to and fussed over and took care of and accepted you. And then, and then it was the mess that was left on the road. And after the last one was squashed, which was a small bow-legged Persian kitten named Clarence, aged six months, who loved me a lot and never wanted any more than just to be alive and play with some piece of string or something. I made my stupid parents promise me that they'd never get me another thing that was alive because I had found out what was true. And the only way not to go crazy if you had the misfortune of being a compulsive namer and lover was if you never hooked yourself up with splatterable things. Then it can never be your fault for needing them and having them because if you don't give, you can't hurt and you don't get guilty because you can't betray if you never gave to begin with. Doesn't that make sense? It, it does make sense. Listen. No, I don't want to listen to you. No matter what I do to you, you just sit there and you love me. I push you away as hard as I can and you're still there. And you, you, I take, you take everything I dish out on you and you just accept me and, and you love me and you want to be alive and you're much sicker than I am. You are out of your damn mind! That was my baby, wasn't it? Of course it was. Tracy. No, just don't say anything. You just still don't understand. What don't I understand? did it on purpose. I sort of let it happen, and it wasn't an accident exactly, and it was a very stupid thing to do, and don't you dare tell me I'm crying, because you're wrong, and I'm not even talking in sentences anymore, and I don't care, because I wanted to have your baby, our baby, and you just shut up and go to hell. If you wanted to get pregnant, then why did you? Just, don't understand, just leave me alone. So now you kill your own to stop the world from doing it first. I warned you. I told you how I was. I can't help it if you didn't want to have a baby. Stop telling me what I want. I want you. Well, you're not going to get me. You can have your stupid house and your stupid clothes and your stupid babies. I can't live like this. I've got to get out of here. I'm going to go exactly the way I came. I'm going back to the ocean. That's where I'm going. Stop it. Get off me. No. I make you miserable. I always have. I tell lies. I don't keep promises. I make everything I touch dirty. And you made me get in fall when I didn't want to. And now we're paying for it. Do you think I ever wanted to make some stupid kid put up with this all her life? She just finds someone who's sick as she was and they'd be sick together. Let me go! No. Anybody that really loved me would try and make me stay someplace I didn't want to. What kind of love is that when you just push people around? You're just like everyone else. You just want to use me. And you think you can make me your own personal slave by playing the good guy all the time? What? Nobody 
you stop. Psychotic bastard. I'm a grown woman, and I'm not nice, and a woman doesn't have to be nice or anything but who she is, and until you can get that through your sticky, stupid, thick brain head, you're just gonna keep getting sicker. If you want to go, go. What do I have to do, throw things at you? Here. No response. Nerves of steel. What about books? You like books. Try this one. How about this one? A little Shakespeare? That's a good one. Oh, I know. Don't go anywhere. Great American novel, huh? You thought I couldn't do that? You thought I couldn't let them drop our baby into a plastic bucket and throw it away? It was a part of you, and it was a part of me, and it came out slimy, and they threw it away. Can't you understand that I just murdered our child? you have a need. Right now, I'm going 